when I used it, what happened was, like, I think I put it on for two minutes or three minutes and I felt this burning sensation, but it was insane. Like, I felt like my skin was gonna melt off my face and I was like, what is going on? Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel, it's Evelyn. Today I am sharing a few products with you that were supposed to target acne prone skin or they are supposed to target acne prone skin but they actually broke me out more. And I'm making this video because I want other people to not make the same mistakes that I made and you know for you to realize that choosing a skincare routine is so personal to you that it doesn't matter if something has worked for someone else's skin it might not work for you so i just wanted to kind of share my experience with these products um, that have worked for a lot of people but that just did not work for me um, but before we jump into the video i would like to remind you to subscribe to my channel if you like my content and hit that notification bell down below so that you can be notified every time i upload a new video okay let's just get right into it So first of all, there can be a lot of different reasons to why a product doesn't work. It can be that the consistency just doesn't work with your skin texture or uh, it's, it doesn't like your skin doesn't absorb it properly or, uh, you know, some people are very sensitive to fragrance, especially if you have sensitive skin uh, and some people are, you know, like allergic to different things that they, they might not know about. There's a lot of brands that don't disclose how much their products use of certain acids uh, and certain essential oils and that can be very damaging because especially if you're new to the skincare world and you're just creating your like skincare routine, obviously you don't know um, what's the right amount of acids and like you can't even look and see for yourself. The four products that I want to mention in today's video are the niacinamide or B3 and zinc from The Ordinary, the rosehip seed oil from The Ordinary, the tea tree oil from The Body Shop and the Super Mud Glam Glow Mask. So niacinamide and zinc from The Ordinary is supposed to be really good for blemish prone skin because uh, both of those ingredients really help to, to combat uh, the sebum production in the skin. Uh, and niacinamide is also really known for repairing the skin barrier. And a lot of people really, really love this product. Um, I've read a lot of reviews about it and I know a lot of people who have used it and you know they swear by this product. And uh, they are people that have had oily skin and acne as well. So I think it's just so like we're just all so different because it's really strange as well because the first time I used this product was in 2018. Uh, and when I used it the first time, it really helped to uh, fade my spots that I had, not fade my spots, it really helped to fade my hyperpigmentation that I had from having acne for a while. Uh, and it was really just fading my, uh, my scars on my cheeks. However, I stopped using it because I think I ran out and then I was abroad or something. So I couldn't like buy it again. And then when I came back to Sweden and I bought it again after like six months, it was so weird because the texture felt completely different and the consistency felt way more like sticky and it felt like I was wearing a film over my skin and I had never experienced that before with that product and I used to really love it so it's kind of weird because now I hate it like I can't use it anymore because it makes my skin uh, oilier it feels like my sebum gets stickier so that product is a big no-no for me and it's it's interesting because it actually has like I think a 4 out of 5 stars on Cold Beauty and it has 8.3 out of 10 on their website so obviously it works for lots of people but then on the skincare community and like the skin positivity community on Instagram lots of people have told me that like this product did not work for them either and it actually caused them to break out even more. It could be that the ingredient like the percentage is just a little bit too high and a little bit too potent and maybe that's what's uh, causing your skin to break out I don't know. But yeah like it seems to me like they have changed the formula I mean there is no there isn't enough evidence uh, to prove that this is true because like I can't really find anything online but I remember reading this post on YouTube from Beauty Within and some people saying that oh I think like they changed the formulation of this product because it doesn't work for me anymore. It's completely normal for brands to do this that they change something about their formulation. I just wish that they would have vocalized what it was so that you could like really find a culprit for it. The second product that I wanted to mention is the rosehip seed oil from The Ordinary. Um, and rosehip seed oil is basically an oil derived from the rose bushes in Chile. 
um, and has antibacterial and antioxidant properties uh, because it, it's got quite a lot of different vitamins, but especially vitamin A, uh, which we know is um, sort of like retinol, like that's uh, retinol is a form of a vitamin A. So technically you'd think that this would work for uh, especially acne prone skin. And it's an oil that is high in linoleic acid percentage, uh, which means that in theory, this oil would be perfect for someone with oily skin. The oils that are high in linoleic acid are much like thinner uh, and they're not as like creamy as let's say um, olive oil or coconut oil, like they're not as potent. So they're more of like a thin oil, um, which are much more easily absorbed by the skin. But this just didn't work for me either. Um, I tried to apply it at night after my skincare routine at night and I thought it was supposed to fade my uh, my scarring because I, I heard it from a lot of people, especially on YouTube. But for me, it just made my sebum stickier. It made my um, skin oilier, uh, which I'm really sad about because I thought it was going to be one of those oils that was really going to work for me, but it didn't, um, which is really unfortunate. Um, but this is also one of those products that have like raving reviews online. It's got like an 8.6 out of 10 on their website, on the CM's website. But you also have to keep in mind that like the people that do try this oil might be people that don't have oily skin, that might actually have dry skin. So it's kind of hard to tell like just by reading reviews. It's something you have to try for yourself because it's not just targeting acne and uh, it's not just targeting oily skin, it kind of targets everybody's skin, to be honest. So the third product is one that is li a little bit more controversial on my list, I would say, and it's the tea tree oil from The Body Shop. Now, this product is not only tea tree oil, but it's actually got like a few other ingredients in it. It's, I think it's probably um, not 100% tea tree oil, but there's like, I think it's a lot of it because it's the third ingredient in this uh, formula in this product. However, something that I noticed when I read this ingredient list was that the second ingredient in this product is denatured alcohol and denatured alcohol is just one of those alcohols that you want to avoid in skincare because it really has the potential to dry out your skin a lot. So that's the second ingredient in this, like keep that in mind. Uh, but basically tea tree oil is an oil which comes from the leaves of an Australian tea tree and it's known for it anti it's known for its antioxidant, antibacterial, and skin soothing properties. Um, however, it's also one of those fragrant oils that you need to be careful with because they can be sensitizing to skin. And apparently, um, tea tree oil also contains components such as linalool, limonene, and eucalyptol, which can all be sensitizing to skin. So that's just you know something to keep in mind that like I think when tea tree oil works at its best is when it's diluted in some other carrier oil or when it's diluted into a different product or like when it's just like a little bit of it in a product but not a lot like not to the point where you can actually smell it but with this product you can actually smell uh how strong it is and considering it's the third ingredient um i'm I'm assuming that they put a lot of it in there. There's this also one of those products where they don't disclose how much they're using and I'm really disappointed at that because, uh, you know, The Body Shop prides themselves for being this uh, company and brand that is like super, like very natural, very ethical and sustainable and all that. But, uh, but then they have products that can really be damaging. They can't just put that buzzword up there like, yeah, natural skincare products because natural doesn't always mean that it will work for you. For example, if someone with acne prone skin and oily skin uses coconut oil, on their skin, it's definitely going to break them out because it is such a poor clogging consistency. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of natural products that actually don't work. You know, if you slice a lemon open and you just rub it on your skin, that's going to be detrimental to your skin barrier. It's going to leave you red, it's going to leave you irritated, itchy. Um, it's just gonna like ruin your, your skin basically. On the website it does claim that this oil is brilliant for oil slick skin that gets blemishes and uh, to use for a clearer complexion. Um, but this did not happen for me, definitely not. It's interesting though, because this is also a product that is very, very highly rated on their website. It's got a 4.5 out of 5, um, out of like, you know, hundreds and hundreds of reviews. Um, but I'm thinking that most people probably use this product as a spot treatment for their spots. Uh, and because it has such a high percentage of denatured alcohol, I'm thinking that maybe the reason why their skin is clearing is because the acne is just drying out so severely, like it's drying out to the point where like, you know, no bacteria can ever grow there, which is 
also what Mario Badescu drying lotions do, uh, which is a double-edged sword because yes, it's nice to see to get that instant gratification the morning after and just see that the spot has disappeared, but it doesn't really it doesn't really tackle the problem from the inside and it's more just like a quick fix solution to me. So I'm thinking maybe that's why people have really loved this product. I think tea tree oil for me specifically is just too strong to use and it's too potent for me to use um, to actually help with anything because whenever I use tea tree like whenever there's tea tree in any of my products it, cause, it causes my skin to like my skin goes crazy I get rashes everywhere I get those little like whiteheads that you get from like irritation uh, from sunburn like that's exactly the same uh, effect that my uh, that this product had on my skin and it was awful like I remember the other day I was using this body wash that apparently had tea tree in it I didn't know that because it, the only thing it said on the title was charcoal I'm not really as anal uh, with looking at body um, body products as I am with skin products because my skin on the, my face is way more sensitive I was using it to clear acne on my body like on my back and stuff um, and it just caused me to break out like crazy and I was like what's going on because it just caused me to uh, become really really red and inflamed and I was like what like it's like worse than before and that's when i knew like tea tree is just not for me now the last product i want to talk about is the most controversial one and that's why i left it for last and it's the super mud charcoal face mask from glam glow i think this product is super controversial especially in this day and age when everyone knows their ingredients everyone knows their acids everyone knows everything about skin because it's got a lot of questionable ingredients in there. First of all, um, the first time I used this product, I think it was a couple of years ago, um, and I wasn't as good at checking ingredients back then as I am today. And the second thing is that this product retails for $60 for 50 grams. Um, so for like this little jar, um, they take $60. So it's, it's, a very, it's a very popular and very expensive product in my opinion considering it's actually just a clay mask and charcoal mask which essentially what a clay mask and charcoal mask does is to yeah absorb the oil from your skin basically that's what any any clay mask would do it's it's nothing groundbreaking it's nothing new it's it's a very traditional way to suck out all of that oil from your skin temporarily like obviously it's not a long-term solution but that's that's why we like this type of clay mask because it feels nice to especially people with oily skin to just see like all of that sebum being sucked out by this mask that itself does not make it worth sixty dollars in my opinion now uh, when I used it what happened was like I think I put it on for two minutes or three minutes and I felt this burning sensation but it was insane like I felt like my skin was gonna melt off and I was like what is going on and at first I was like well you know some products do leave that tingly sensation and, and it's normal it just means the acids are working uh, but then after a while I was like okay no I'm gonna take this off and you know, sometimes products, they feel tingly, but then you take it off and your skin just looks normal. But this one, I took it off and I remember my skin was like red, like all around here. It just felt like I had put on like a wrong, <laughs> wrong color foundation that was like super pink. So I was like, why am I pink all over my face? And I was reading the reviews about this product and apart from the reviews that were really highly rated, if you look at the reviews that were really low like that had really low rating like one i think it was like 50 reviews that had that they all say the same thing and as you can see on these pictures these people were experiencing the exact same thing as me and it's just really crazy to me to, that like this product that is so expensive can actually cause your skin to do that uh, or it's interesting because a lot of these people that were reviewing this product uh, they say that they didn't have sensitive skin and they had never experienced this before but this product really caused them to break out in rashes it caused them to get whiteheads everywhere if you are one of those people that have used this mask and you're watching this video now and you think wow like i went through that as well uh, it's really not that weird and I'm gonna explain in a second why that is. Uh, so first of all, I think the third or fourth ingredient in this is eucalyptus leaf. Um, and I think that is why, because the mask kind of feels like it's got some bits and pieces of something in there, like some sort of exfoliating stuff. And apparently that is the eucalyptus leaf. Um, and first of all, I don't understand why they would use eucalyptus leaf, um, even if it was supposed to be a physical exfoliator. I don't know why you would use like the leaf of anything. It just seems kind of weird to me. Um, and then the second thing is that they use eucalyptus oil. 
And eucalyptus oil is interesting because, you know, it has really helped to combat colds and bronchitis uh, and just any, any sort of like nasal issue or respiratory problem. It's really nice to inhale it. That's why we put it in like vapor rub and that's why um, you can like rub it uh, on places where your muscles are tense because it's like a muscle, like it, it relieves muscle tension basically. But it's not very well researched if it's beneficial for the skin. I was reading this article I think on Birdie or Allure where they interviewed a couple of dermatologists and all of them said that, you know, there isn't, like they didn't really recommend using eucalyptus oil for the skin. It doesn't have enough research to actually say that it is beneficial at all. There is really no like... Hi guys, so I realized that I was saying eucalyptus leaf oil and I meant leaf powder and yes, it's not the same thing, I know, but uh, regardless, I don't think eucalyptus should be used on the face, so anyway, back to the video. The second thing is that I think they're using like five to seven acids in this product. Uh, so they're using like tartaric acid, peruvic acid, mandelic acid, salicylic acid, glycolic acid, and lactic acid. So they're using a lot of acids in here. And of course, like acids, I'm always going to be pro acids because they, they are really good chemical exfoliants. However, we don't know how much percentage they're using out of all of these ingredients. Like, are they using 30% glycolic acid? Are they using 30% lactic acid? Are they using... 0.05% uh, of uh, tartaric acid, like we don't know anything. I think it's really important to for a brand to actually disclose how much percentage of an ingredient that they're using because some people could be sensitive to like certain acids but actually be fine with another acid. It's just all smack on there, like you know, it's all like just been... I don't know. I, I, just, I don't like it when, you know, when brands don't disclose how much percentage they use of acids. Third thing that I want to get into is that this product contains a bunch of flower extracts um, and they are flowers that I've never heard about before. So I did some research because I was actually interested in knowing. So this product contains ivy extract, comfrey extract and Peppermint oil, super potent oil that is fragrant. So ivy extract is a vine from a leaf and is mostly used as a medicine to improve lung function or to stimulate mucus glands or to treat bronchitis. So it's sort of similar to eucalyptus in that way, I would say. Um, but it's also highly allergenic and it's very unstable to use on skin because it can be super astringent. The second leaf is the comfrey leaf extract, which is you know yet another extract of a perennial herb um, and it, which has also been mostly used as a medicine to help with muscle sprains, bruises, burns and joint inflammation. Um, however, the ingredient is very unstable to use in skincare because if the amount is unknown, it can be super sensitizing because you need the right proportion of this extract for like not to be harmful or to aggravate your skin. It, it's also one of those herbs or extracts that haven't been researched enough to show that they would evidently help for the skin. But I just don't understand why they would put these flower extracts in like an acne, um, you know, acne solution kind of clay mask. I think it's just weird to me. I don't know why they've done that. Okay, so peppermint oil is another one of their ingredients and peppermint oil is one of those ingredients that we know are also a, like a fragrant oil that can be very sensitizing to skin and aggravate skin and especially knowing that peppermint oil actually has 40% menthol and you know that is why we use it in mouthwashes and toothpaste and sometimes gum and stuff but it's not really supposed to be applied topically onto the skin and it doesn't have enough evidence to prove that it's beneficial at all. Um, there's a lot of reasons I don't like this product and I think that it could potentially be harmful. If there's any product that I know that isn't clean or isn't good for the skin it's this product because it's got so many sketchy ingredients that like sound really nice like oh ivy flower extract like it sounds nice and it sounds like it's a natural thing i will definitely not be using any of these products ever again probably i will potentially use the rosehip seed oil again but only on my hands or on my body but not actually on my face because evidently it's not working for me so if this if these products are working for you like keep using them don't throw them away obviously this is just my opinion and what i think about these products and how they have not worked for me personally if you've had any bad experiences with these products as well as i have please leave it in the comment down below i'd really like to hear your story on these products and 
Uh, also leave a comment if you have any other products that are, have really been bad for your skin or that have caused you to break out more uh, as an acne prone person. Um, I'm doing this series on uh, skincare reviews for acne prone skin and um, the playlist is going to be here somewhere so that you can check it out and um, hopefully a few times a month I'm going to be reviewing some products and how they have worked for my oily acne prone skin and I'm hoping that we can be more open and positive regarding skin and acne and just show our real skin out there because you know perfection is unattainable and we should always strive for progress and not perfection but yeah guys thank you so much for watching this video um hit the like button down below if you liked it or share it with a friend who would like to watch this or see this and yeah have a nice day guys bye